Hello and welcome to this video. So now we've finished up then with a simple simulation and a more complicated simulation and you've got kind of the foundations to really build any kind of simulation you like, I thought it might be good to start looking at some of the simple candle patterns. We're not going to look at many, but just some of them to give you an idea as how you might go about calculating them. So I've made a start with a new notebook called candlepatterns.ipynb and I've imported our usual imports at the top. And I've also stolen the plot candles function from the inside bar explorer. However, I noticed when I was just copying that over before clicking record, there's a pretty bad bug in this function here. So I've got the inside bar explorer and the plot candles here. And I noticed when I copied it that we had this DF buys and DF cells because we were plotting the buys and the cells, if you remember, as markers on the candles. Now, interestingly, these don't actually come in as an argument at all into the function. I sat there wondering exactly how it then works, seeing it was only aware of DF plot. Well, of course, this is one of the downsides of a notebook. They're very, very flexible, but they're not very good for keeping track of what's going on sometimes. And this was a case in point because somewhere down the bottom of the notebook, we defined our data frame buys and sells here. And therefore, when we came to executing the plot candles, whoops, sorry, back down the bottom here. So here, these were already defined. Now, if you imagine this in line, so we executed the function here, the notebook already had the DF buys and sells in memory and just assumed we were wanting to use those in the code here. This is obviously a uh, incorrect coding but never mind it worked in the notebook before but um, if you've had some strange errors that might be one of the reasons why. So I've copied that function into the candle patterns but I've deleted these two loops uh, going through these markers here. So we've got the function plot candles with the plotting data frame and we don't have anything about the buys or the cells inside here. So I'm going to execute those first two cells. The next thing is also taken from the inside bar explorer. It's just loading up our four hour US dollar Japanese uh, yen candle. So we've got something to work with. In this video, we're not actually going to do any patterns. We're just going to do some setup so we can get towards uh, creating our patterns. There's going to be a bit of copy and paste because I don't want you to have to watch me fumble the entire time. And of course, the code is on GitHub anyway for you to for you to copy. So I'm making a new array here uh, of columns that we actually want from the data frame. And this is simply because we're going to calculate all the patterns on the mid prices. We don't need volume or the asks or the bids, so we can keep everything a little bit smaller. And once we've defined this array, we can make ourselves a new data frame. And that's just simply taking a copy of our raw data, but only the columns that we need. So if I type df.head, we should have everything we need. And we have, there's the first five rows with our prices. And one last check is just to make everything sure everything is numerical by typing df.info. And yes, we've got float 64 and the date time type there. Good. So as I said, we're not going to calculate every can candle pattern that exists. We're just going to do a couple of the simple ones. And to do that, we're going to need to calculate some statistics for our candles. So to do that, we're going to write a function called apply stats. So I'm going to type def apply stats and take in a data frame. Now I'm just going to type pass and execute so that output disappears and then I'll replace the pass. So the first thing we're going to do is make a new column and I'm going to call this column range. So this is the full price range of the candle. This is the high minus the low. Next thing we're going to need to know to identify some certain patterns is the actual range of the body in terms of price. So that's going to be the close minus the open. And then we're using the absolute here so that we get a positive number all the time. So remember absolute converts any negative number into positive. Another critical number always when calculating candle patterns is the actual center point of a candle. Again, I'm going quickly here because it's pretty simple stuff, but we've got the high minus the low divided by two plus the low will give us the center of the candle. And now a critical statistic, and that's the actual range of the body in terms of a percentage of the entire candle. So I've called this body percentage here and it's simply the body range divided by the full range. Why do we have that? Well, if you imagine the doji candle, I think it's called, if I remember correctly, the very, very thin bodied one, we might want to say, identify those candles, for instance, by a body percentage that is say less than five or 6% or something like this. And the same goes for the really full bodied candles as well with very short spikes on them. We might want say body percentage above 80 or 90%. So this is really good for identifying uh, those kind of patterns. We do then want the direction that the candle is going in. So we want to know if the candle is a buy or sell candle. So we're going to make a new column called direction, which is the close minus the open. Now this will give us a positive number. So a green candle, if the close is better than the open and vice versa likewise, but I'd like a one or a minus one. Now we've done this before in the inside bar simulation where we wrote ourselves a small function for saying is something a buy or a sell. I'm gonna show you something a little bit new this time. We're going to use a lambda to actually do this a little bit differently and do it in one line here. We're going to say that the data frame direction column is equal to the data frame direction dot apply 
lambda x colon and 1 if x is greater than or equal to 0 else minus 1. Now if you're not new to Python you'll understand what this is and uh, not have any problems but if you're new to Python and programming in general you're going to look at that and think what in the world is going on there. So lambdas are just anonymous functions and they're generally used for very simple expressions. Anonymous means that it's a function that just hasn't been explicitly defined somewhere in the code. So I'm going to replicate this lambda just up here and again I apologize if you're really familiar with Python you know all this but if you're not familiar or new to programming this will be very confusing. So let me write a function and this function is called ff it takes in an argument x and says if x is greater than or equal to 0 return 1 else return minus 1. This is doing exactly the same thing that this lambda is doing here. You remember when we've previously used the apply, we've used it on the data frame itself. We specified the axis, so whether we want to go by columns or by rows, we've always said row by row, axis equals 1. And we've then applied a function that we've written like this that has taken automatically our row as the first argument. What we're doing here is we're applying the apply function to a series, so a column essentially in our table, in our data frame. So when we do that, the argument that will be sent to the function automatically is each value in that particular series. And that's this value x here. This is exactly the same as this x in the ff here. It's just known as anonymous. In other words, we haven't defined it and called it something like ff is called ff here. We've just left it unnamed and all inline here. And you'll see that what we're doing here is we're saying return 1 if x is greater than or equal to 0, else return minus 1. Now you can go a step further actually and define your lambda as a variable and then reuse simply that variable inside your code somewhere as well. But I'm going to leave that as it is here. So if it's clear what that's doing now, it's simply giving us a 1 or a minus 1 depending on whether the close was bigger than the open or vice versa. So we can execute that cell and make sure you've executed this cell as well. And then we can actually call that function and have a look at what's actually inside. So df is equal to apply stats brackets df and then df.head and I get an error. Oh, I've forgotten to return the actual data frame from the function. So let's try and do that again. Okay, that's better. You can see now that we've got our data frame then and we have our body range, the range, the center point, the body percentage and the direction. So just before we finish this video, I'd like to add two more statistics into this. And that is how far is the body from the top of the candle and how far is the body from the bottom of the candle? So we're going to write two functions and they're going to be very, very similar, but I'm trying to do this as clearly as possible. So we'll say apply top end distance and there we take in a row and to save time we're going to paste this in because you've seen all this kind of stuff before. We're going to say if the direction of the row is 1 the distance is the high point minus the close because it was a green candle so the top of the body is the close price otherwise the top of the body was the open so we'll do the high minus the open and we're going to do exactly the opposite thing where we just apply the bottom end distance and this time we'll say again if the direction is a 1 then we'll do the opening price minus the low because the opening was the lowest price of the body. Otherwise, we'll do the close price minus the low. And that gives us exactly the same thing. So down then in apply stats, what we can do is we can say that the distance to the top is our data frame dot apply. Apply top end distance axis equals one. This is the familiar apply that we've done before. And then we can also calculate our distance to the bottom. And remember these distances are calculated in terms of price here. So we need to add two more columns on here, which are the percentage distance of the top and the bottom, which is then the dist top divided by this range and the dist bottom divided by the range. So just to show you schematically what we have then, we've got a candle here with our high and low. So our range is this distance here from top to bottom in terms of price. And then we've got our body range here and we make that a percentage of the total range as well. And this is our dist top and our dist bottom. And we also saved the midpoint price as well. So I'm just going to execute that again and then re-execute the stats application. And you can now see that we've got most of the important stats calculated that we need to be able to calculate some candle patterns. So hopefully that made some sense. Uh, any comments, questions, welcome as always by email or on YouTube. Thanks very much for the interest so far and see you in the next video.